Hey everybody, Stuart here. Hope you're all well. This week is going to be quite a short video, but make sure you stay all the way to the end because you're going to learn tons of stuff. I'm going to show you what you can get from Delta Blues turnarounds. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss the next set of videos. These turnarounds are amazing things to learn because you're working blocks of fingers, you're working with chords, which is a totally different exercise. And also the sound of them is amazing because we're dealing with multiple moving voices within the chords. It's the study of counterpoint in a blues context. One note moves up, another moves down, another stays in place. That gives you all these amazing tension and release points, which is at the heart of blues. You need a good chord vocabulary for this. They're dealing with lots of different inversions. I talk about this in my soul rhythm guitar book more, but fundamentally, the more chord inversions you have, the more you can connect chords in interesting ways. Let's get started by just seeing what the fretting hand is doing so you can play through these shapes and then we'll bring in the picking hand to turn it into music. I'm going to show you how to change the tone in the picking hand a bit now to get more of an authentic delta sound. All I'm doing is taking the picking hand from the standard position, which is kind of just over the sound hole, and I'll move it back towards the bridge. So I'm playing what we call pizzicato, which is that more biting, trebly kind of sound, which is what you commonly hear from the old vintage Gibson and Stella guitars that these guys would play. You don't have to play it like this, of course, but it's another option to get you in that direction. What I'm going to do next is play each chord, but I'm going to break it up so I play each note one after another. The reason you want to practice this is so you can make sure that the fretting hand is playing every note in the chord cleanly and accurately, because if you don't, you're going to lose maybe one or two of those really important voices moving against each other. This is a great way to practice, particularly if you're more used to playing licks and not chords that are using four fingers or bars as we have here. You find these turnarounds played at 
all different speeds. If it's an intro, it might be setting up a slow song or a fast song. So I'm gonna play the turnaround again this time, but I'm gonna pick up the pace just so you can see how that changes everything. And of course, it's more of a challenge as well. Now here's a technique these guys use time and time again. I'm gonna play through the sequence, but this time I'm gonna play everything staccato, which means I'm taking the pressure off the fingers so the notes have that really brief punctuated sound. I'm gonna stay in the 12-8 feel here, but I'm gonna give it a different rhythmic pulse. Check this out. Okay, and another rhythmic feel now. I'm gonna take it from 12-8 and put it into 4-4, four, four, so the pulse has changed completely. Now we're thinking about an underlying pulse of one and two and three and four and. Let's see how that sounds. Here's another approach that gets you closer to a stride piano type feel. I'm simply breaking up the picking pattern. So I'm playing the outside strings of the chord followed by the inside strings of the chord, which gives me more separation and more of a sense of movement with what I'm doing. Thanks for watching everybody. I really hope you find that useful and let me know how you get on in the comments below. If you're looking to move your playing forward, check out my guitar books. You'll find all the details in the information box. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. I'll be back very soon for you. Until then, stay well and take care.